Earlier this month, naval pilots had a miraculous escape as their advanced light helicopter saw sudden loss of power and rapid loss of height off the coast of Mumbai. The pilot carried out control ditching, an emergency landing on water. All the three crew members on board the helicopter were rescued by a naval patrol craft after immediate search and rescue mission. Thankfully, the aircraft has been recovered and the board of inquiry will find out the exact reason why the incident happened. As part of the standard operating procedure, all ALHS operated by the Navy, Air Force and the Army and the Coast Guard have been grounded till precautionary checks are carried out. The ALH is an essential fulcrum for the services. Designed in 1983, it is a utility helicopter used across the services for various roles including transport of personnel and material. However, this isn't the first time that the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited manufactured ALH has encountered problems. There are at least 18 known incidents involving the ALH over the past two decades. Some reports suggest that there could be even 22 accidents involving the chopper. Between 2017 and 2021, Parliament data shows that there were six reported incidents of the ALH. My colleague Suchet Veer Singh spoke to the former Navy Chief Admiral Arun Prakash who said that while the ALH has a solid design, a series of accidents incidents indicate that there may be some design or manufacturing issues which need to be addressed on a fleet-wide base. You should log on to the print and read the story by Suchet. Multiple experts have pointed out that most likely problems related to design and engineering are plaguing the ALH fleet. However, the concern is that only a comprehensive and independent review can find the answers to the current incident and the larger issues at hand. As mentioned earlier, this is not the first time accidents have happened. And remember, all accidents have happened in peace times. The most infamous accident was that in 2019 when the then GOC of the Army's Northern Command, Lieutenant General Ranbir Singh, crash landed while on a trip from Udhampur. While the findings of the Court of Enquiry into the crash is not public, sources in the defense establishment told the print that the crash involving Lieutenant General Singh happened after the collective, which controls a part to the rotors and back, broke. This, the sources said, was a manufacturing defect and not a maintenance defect. Remember that there are three major controls in a helicopter that the pilot must use during flight. One is the collective pitch control, then the cyclic pitch control and the anti-torque pedals or the tail rotor control. The collective pitch control or simply collective or the thrust lever is located on the left side of the pilot's seat and is operated with the left hand. The collective is used to make changes to the pitch angle of the main rotor blades and does this simultaneously or collectively as the name implies. As the collective pitch control is raised, there is a simultaneous and equal increase in pitch angle of all main rotor blades. As it is lowered, there is a simultaneous and equal decrease in pitch angle. The break of the collective can actually lead to a sudden loss of power. Also remember that the number of accidents does not include the four of the seven ALHS crash soon after HL exported them to Equator Air Force in 2008-2009 for $42.5 million. These crashes led to Equator eventually terminating its ALH contract with the HL in 2015, a major setback to what was then the first ever major export of an indigenous military platform. The HL insists that the accidents happen due to maintenance issues and not due to any role that the HL would have played. So what is ALH? Even though its development was started in 1984 and was initially designed with Germany's assistance, ALH was first flown in 1992 but entered service after certification in 2002. It's a twin-engine, multi-role, multi-mission, new-generation helicopter in the 5.5-ton weight class and is seen as a workhorse of the Army. Over 400 of the helicopter, the latest version, which is the Mark III, have been built by HL, including its weaponized version known as the ALH Rudra. More helicopters are on their way. The armed forces are buying more and more helicopters, both for transport and combat. Interestingly, the IAF now operates more helicopters 
than actually fighter aircraft. The IAF have been operating helicopters for several decades now. Between 1954 and 1957, the Indian Air Force took delivery of the three Sikorsky S-55 and two S-55C aircraft. These were the earliest helicopter types acquired by the IAF, with Sikorsky aircraft being the first manufacturer to support the requirements of the Indian supply mission. The Indian military now has a mix of transport, utility and attack helicopters. The IAF and the Army are set to induct hundreds of helicopters in the near future along with the Navy. One big reason for the Russian failure in Ukraine initially was the over-dependence on attack helicopters. The Russians did not learn from the Afghanistan experience where they lost over 300 helicopters due to stingers. The same thing happened in Ukraine where they were shot down easily by shoulder-fired missiles. The doctrines should have changed, but they didn't. While helicopters are useful, they cannot fly within the bubble of a stinger. The print had recently spoken to Army Chief General Manoj Pandey and asked him if the army was relying too much on attack helicopters, which have proved to be a disaster in the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war. Jill Pandey said that the helicopters would have relevance in warfare in future. It's a constant game between helicopters and anti-helicopter systems, he added, just as it is with tanks and anti-tank systems. But many within the Indian defense establishment feel that in a world of modern warfare with shoulder-fired missiles flooding the battle scene, helicopters are an easy target. This is what the US has also learned. The United States Army, as it considers replacement for its OH-58 and the UH-60 Black Hawk helicopters, is exploding platforms that fly fast at below radar detection level instead of high and slow like the current set of helicopters. Last year, a top Chinese military helicopter designer spoke about the possibilities of the country's next generation choppers, which could feature completely new designs and configurations. He was of the opinion that high speed and artificial intelligence are among the trends in the development of future helicopters. Unlike the traditional configuration of previous helicopters, the new ones will have a very different designs, including those that were made to break the physical speed limit of about 300 kilometers and are restricted. So unlike the traditional configuration of previous helicopters, the new ones will have very different designs including those that were made to break the physical speed limit of about 300 kilometers and are restricted by the traditional design of an helicopter. At the print, we believe in non-hyphenated journalism, high quality, fair and questioning journalism. Our exceptional ground reporting is something that we are very proud of and encourage reporters to travel across the country to tell stories no one does. All this comes at a huge cost. To encourage us and to support our work, I request you to please opt for a paid subscription. You will be able to see the process on our screen and can follow the link in the description of this video to do so. We are also launching a host of exclusive benefits for you like priority passes to our webinars and on-ground events, opportunity to get your article published on our your turn section, some specially curated newsletters and so on. So please support our work and click on the link in the description below to subscribe. For the print, this is Snehish Alex Philip. As I said, do subscribe to the print for more such videos. Thank you.